hi to you all, uh, for those of you who are joining, and, and welcome. My name is Manny Tejeda, one of the program directors here at CFES Berlin Pathways, and I'm excited to introduce Andrew Grout from the ADK Foundation. So today, the, the focus of um, Early College and Career Awareness Week really is it's the transition to, to college. So we'll talk a little bit about you know, what organizations like ADK Foundation can do for students. Um, hi, Lauren. And, and talk about how students can get involved in their communities. And hopefully, to Andrew's point earlier on, how can we keep young people in our areas, right? So with that, I'm going to turn it to you, Andrea, so if you can introduce yourself, and then we'll jump right on on, on questions. Sure. Thank you, Manny. Thanks so much for including me today. I'm really happy to join you and um, talk a little bit more about how people can get involved in their community. And just to sort of start it off, I'll just tell you a little bit about Adirondack Foundation. Um, Adirondack, I'm, I'm the program officer at Adirondack Foundation, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what that means and what I do in a little bit. But um, Adirondack Foundation has been a trusted and valued resource for community philanthropy since 1997, 24 years old. We are one of more than 700 community foundations across the country that are helping to connect generous donors with the causes they care about and, and the places that they love. So uh, our funding comes from many, many different people who care about the region, the Adirondacks of Northern New York. And today the foundation has over 260 different charitable funds and we support hundreds of nonprofits annually, um, such as, as CFES, Brilliant Pathways. Um, we are the philanthropic hub for the Adirondack region, which basically means that we use our assets, um, you know, people, not, not just financial assets, people, knowledge, and money to strengthen our communities by making grants to nonprofit organizations and schools and municipalities and for something that you all can hopefully relate to, scholarships to students. And we want to ensure that everybody who loves this region can not only live here and, and make a living and raise a family, but also to thrive here and you know, become part of their community and, and enjoy it for all the wonderful things that it has to offer. So, um, you know, since our founding 24 years ago, Adirondack Foundation has awarded more than $54 million worth of grants. Um, so that's, that's my job. That's where I come into it. I am the program officer, which means that I'm responsible for not only all of the grant making and the things that uh, help nonprofits in the region to do their amazing work, like Rolling Pathways does to help um, kids with a college and career pathway, but to also help facilitate scholarships um, and so people can help meet their educational goals. And um, I have to say that one of the things that I love about working at the foundation and one of the best things about the foundation itself is um, the people that we work with and the people that I get to meet uh, every day, people who are involved in our community in so many different ways and, and different aspects, um, that people work together to help make a difference in this community and, and, and try to, um, you know, solve problems and uh, tackle issues and, you know, we want this to be um, a place for, where all people, um, uh, diverse groups of people and, and ages can come and live and thrive and survive. So, um, yeah, that's about that's about all I have to say about Adirondack Foundation. I'm happy to answer more questions, but yeah, that's not, that's, that's an it. awesome introduction. It, it, <laughs> it gives me tons of questions to ask you as follow up. So I just mm -hmm. want to I just want to note that we have two schools from Texas. So we have Van Horn San Elisario High School. Uh, we have Crown Point, and we have Willsboro Live right now. So, so obviously, yeah. two of them are in your area, and two of mm -hmm. them are not. And from the other schools that we work with, that we'll be watching this uh, recording later, um, can you maybe share a little bit about why it's important for students to get involved in their in their communities? Yeah, I mean, there's. Uh, um, the Adirondack region is rich in opportunities for, you know, 
volunteerism and, and just participation in the community. And, um, you know, we have a lot of colleges in the Adirondacks. So um, students that, that are going here can get involved in a lot of the sort of Adirondack specific ones. You know, I can't speak to the activities in places like Texas and things, but I think that it's a kind of a universal thing in all communities that you can find great opportunities if, if you follow your heart and you follow your interest, what you're interested in really can drive that. And, um, you know, having, I went to, to the State University of New York at Plattsburgh. So I went, I'm a SUNY Plattsburgh grad and I'm proud of it. And, you know, so I can sort of speak to the fact that there are tons of ways to get involved. We, uh, I was involved with my sorority. I, I never thought I would be a sorority girl like a jillion years, but I did. And, and, it was one of the best ways to get involved and participate in stuff happening in the community that I could have ever imagined. And, um, you know, I think the most important thing is to determine what you're interested in and, and kind of follow that path. You know, with my sorority, I was, we had a, a bunch of community service that was required and, you know, I would get involved with things like, doing food drives for the local food pantries and, um, you know, helping out. I was, I'm an artist and, and art, the arts were my, my passion. And so I got involved with the local art centers and, um, and just volunteering for events and things. And, you know, it's, it makes you feel really good when you, when you participate in something like a food drive and you know that you're helping people who are in need and, and, um, doing good things. And sometimes when you're in college, you're a little bit myopic and you don't really think about the bigger picture. So I think one of the benefits of that is that it really helps you open your eyes to what's happening around you. You know, it helps you to step outside of yourself for a moment and, and think about other people and what kinds of, you know, things make a strong, healthy community. Some of the, the resources as you transition to college and you know going into college, it's hard to know where to go um, for resources and, and places to get involved. And you know the um, student affairs offices um, really can help you with with knowing where to where to get involved and, and share your interest areas with them and they can they can direct you in a lot of ways there are a lot of good resources there um you know as i said if you're interested in the arts you can try and find the local arts center or if acting is your thing maybe get involved with the theater and a local theater group you know it really um another idea is in you know the adirondacks i mean Point folks, you know this, and Willsboro, the Adirondack region is um, very interested in sports because the Olympics were here, and, and you know, two different Olympics were held here in Lake Placid. And this is a super easy place to get involved with your community and things that are happening here. You know, the Olympic region hosts a huge number of large scale athletic events. You know, we have the, um, the World Cup bobsled and skiing and and things like that. So if you're interested in sports, you can always get involved in things like that that are happening in your community. And, you know, it's kind of fun there, are, you know, to volunteer, you know, in the Lake Placid region, if you volunteer for a World Cup bobsled event, you're going to get free ski passes to White Face Mountain and go ski for free. So there are perks involved also. So there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, you know, these big world-class events take a ton of, of people power to put on. And so, you know, that's one aspect, but I would also encourage people to, um, get involved with nonprofit organizations. And that's not always an easy thing to find, but, um, you know, the, like I say, the, the student affairs offices, they know that the opportunities that are available in your college community and ways that you can help out and get involved and a lot of times they you know depending on your your um coursework you can get involved with internships Adirondack foundation has had several interns that are in college who come on board to help us with special projects and 
every nonprofit organization out there that I know of has lots of things they need help with because they, you know, if, if they do, um, you know, events or if they do big mailings or if they do, um, you know, projects, like we have a, a Birth to Three Alliance, which helps families with, with children from age zero through three to try and get the best start in life. So we've had interns come on to Adirondack Foundation to help us, um, you know, putting together packets for books for babies and delivering them to families and, and giving, you know, <laughs> there's nothing more fun than delivering books to a new mom to, to give to her kids. So, you know, there are lots of different ways that you can get involved with nonprofit organizations. And I would encourage you to, try and find one that's in the area that you're interested in, you know, uh, Adirondack um, ADK Action, you know, if you're interested in the environment and you're concerned about, you know, things like road salt in your lakes or, you know, um, helping to, to feed people, you know, during the pandemic, they created food boxes from local farms that they put together and, and gave to the community because there was so much food insecurity there. Are, tons of opportunities for young people to get involved in that. And I think, um, you know, the, the key, like I say, is to find something that resonates with you and seek out those opportunities because those are the ones that are going to give you the most meaningful experience. That, I mean, you shared so much there that I want, you know, I could talk about kind of how the <laughs> still weave into it in terms of obviously the teamwork, the networking that happens the leadership that students can take, but and, and you talked a little bit about this. But what other benefits are there for students to get involved in helping them transition to college? I know from the college mm -hmm. side when I was working at the University of Vermont in the admissions office, I was um, part of a retention committee, and one of the mm -hmm. things that we were noticing was that the reason why students wouldn't stay. Um, wasn't really because they weren't academically prepared. It wasn't because financially they couldn't afford it. It was because they couldn't find place socially to fit in as part of the community, which is very interesting because when you dig a little deeper, it all uh, stemmed through the one thing, they weren't involved, right? So so yeah. as we talk about that, what you know, obviously you, you explained the benefit um, a little bit about why getting involved is so important, but you know, can you maybe elaborate a little bit more in terms of those activities that um, that you all can do uh, that are available in the ADK Foundation that students can participate on? Um, sure. So, you know, you're, as you're preparing to take that big leap and go to college, it's so, it so can be really daunting and trying to, um, you know, a, trying to find the school where you feel like you're going to fit in and, and then the community where you feel like you're going to fit in. It's, it's such a daunting process just to get there. And then once you get there, if you're not feeling like, you, you know, you feel like a square peg in a round hole, that's, that can be really challenging. So, you know, volunteer involvement is, is a big part of the strategy for you getting into college. And I, I'm assuming that many people um, have, have um, you know, component of your graduation that gets you involved you know I would I would say that you know the same kind of thing is true once you're there and you're a freshman and it can be hard to find those opportunities but um, I think it's important to your success in school and in life to see the big picture of what it means to live in and become a part of your community so finding um, things that are happening in your college community that that you're interested in like um you know if, if you're in the arts you know go to the department heads of your um you know department the art department and find out and, and ask you gotta the problem is for so many people and myself included my biggest challenge when i was in college was i was painfully shy and i was i struggled so much I could never have done one of these things when I was going into college. It was really challenging. So it's really important that you can try to step out of your comfort zone and talk to people and talk to people about what the opportunities are out there. Say, hey, you know, if you're walking through campus and you see something that looks really cool, like they're 
painting a mural or something and that's something that you know strikes your fancy ask about it hey how can i get involved in doing something like that and and that may be easier said than done but but there are a lot of ways that you can find to get involved with things like that and you never know um when you are participating in something that can help you feel so connected and you never know if that's the, the community that you're going to end up living in. You may, may want to move there. So, you know, with the Adirondacks, it's an easy place to get involved in these activities because, um, you know, the, there's so much going on and the nonprofits in our region are sort of a, are a huge and wonderful economic driver and they're a large part of what makes this area a wonderful place to live. And every place, every community has nonprofit organizations and businesses that, you know, um, make the community what it is. So, you know, if it's working within human services or the environment or the arts or economic development, trying to, you know, find something that that is um, in your area of interest. I feel like I'm a broken record, but that's what's really going to make you, um, you know, kind of connect and, and find something that you love to do. You know, I, I had a couple of friends in college who were sorority sisters, as I mentioned earlier, who ended up, um, you know, working in social services because they volunteered at a homeless shelter. And, um, you know, that, that got them really, it sparked that passion for helping others who, who really, in lots of cases, couldn't help themselves and, and just needed a leg up. And so, you know, it's, um, you know, you're learning from your experiences every single day and that ends up helping to shape who you are and, and who you want to be in the future. And I think, um, finding opportunities like that is huge. So, you know, another couple of examples, um, you know, the Adirondack Council is an environmental organization that helps, um, you know, preserve the Adirondacks and the pristine wildlife for, for all time. And they have, um, they have internships where people, you know, go out on the high peaks trails and they ask, they survey people, you know, what, what brought you here? Where are you staying? You know, things like that, that are, um, you know, a great way to meet new people and, and getting out there in the community, but giving back to this organization. Um, you know, there are groups like, um, you know, ADK Action, they're, they're doing, um, you know, pollinator projects. You can help get involved with planting gardens. You can help, there, there are, innumerable um, opportunities out there. And I just think, you know, that's one of the coolest ways to help get to know your community is by meeting the people who live there and, and are working there. And you can even, you know, local libraries, my goodness. So many people, I know a bunch of young people who tutor, tutor high school kids um, in math and science in the local library. and. And that's a great way to, A, give back and help the next generation of kids thrive in school, but also getting out there and getting to know people. Absolutely. So. And I think that goes really well for those who are kind of on the fence. They don't, they don't necessarily know what they want to do or study in college, or they, they might want to go with a track. And that track really is no longer once they, you know, take that first semester or first year in college, they're like... Maybe this is not for me, right? Mm -hmm. Through involvement, so you can get a lot more experiential learning opportunities. Exactly. And really dive into different fields and really network with other people who might have a different path than you, but might be mm -hmm. of interest to you in the future. So I know mm -hmm. we're, we're going to be mindful of time, so I want to um, allow folks to um, ask any questions in the chat. I do have another question, so feel free to um, put them in the chat. But in the meantime, I'll go ahead and ask the question. Uh, you mentioned earlier about scholarship opportunities, and that's something that, you know, obviously would be another benefit uh, for being involved. So can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, well, there are, you know, I mean, I can't speak so much to any that kind of require service for people, but, um, you know, scholarships, there are a lot of opportunities um, 
within your the, the financial aid offices at scholar at colleges have scholarships in mind, and there are a lot of different um, you know services, search services that can help you. But um, you know, scholarships are you know I mean there are often ways where you can you know you meet the people who are offering the scholarship, and they can provide you with you know entrees into different. Um, different opportunities, but, um, you know, scholarship is, is, um, sometimes there are requirements to give back and get involved to, to even get a scholarship, but, um, is that where you're going with that? I mean, I'm not sure I'm clear on your question, but their Adirondack Foundation has a number of different scholarships and different ways, um, of, of funding students' school, but a lot of them opportunities are either you find out when you're a freshman in high or a, a, sorry, a senior in high school, or there are opportunities that are available for freshmen and, and people who are already in school and a lot of um, you know, non-traditional opportunities. Community foundations help facilitate scholarships, but so do the, the college um, financial aid offices and the, the schools. I'm not sure I answered your question, though, Manny. <laughs> no, you you did. It was it was really just about the 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 community scholarships that students can access, whether they're in high school or they're in college. Right. Yeah, and they would they would reach out to their college, uh, their senior, um, you know, advisor or their uh, the guidance office and the the counselors at the school, and they can direct you with things that you might be eligible for to get some financial assistance because it can be a daunting thing that can be another barrier. You know, obviously school is really expensive and you got to take all the opportunities that you can to um, try to, to find ways to afford it. <laughs> um, and, you know, some of them are, are purely academic and some are based on what you're involved with. Um, and, and the types of, you know, it just really depends on the, um, the people who have set up those scholarship funds, um, and they are all over the board. Um, you know, we have a scholarship at the foundation that's a medical scholarship. If you are from the Adirondack Park and you want to go to med school, you know, this is for someone who's already graduated and gotten their, their bachelor's, but wants to move on to med school, they can get a $10,000 scholarship. So you know, it's important to just ask and look at all the opportunities at the college that you're planning on going to. Also, in addition to just the, the stuff that's available at the high school level, because there are different opportunities as you progress through your college. That's awesome. Well, that's a great way of ending. Thank you so much for sharing so much information with us uh, and the students, how they can transition to college. So uh, we'll be on in another five minutes for session number two. So uh, we'll see you all there. Okay, thanks.